So the first thing I would like to point out is that there are many feed water heaters up on the deck. Um, there's three closed feed water heaters and then an open feed water heater behind it. Um, this feed water heater closest to us is number two, um, behind it is number four, and then number one, the highest pressure heater, is the one in the back there. I mean, you might notice that their sizes are a little bit different. Um, the higher the pressure of the steam, the smaller specific volume, um, or greater the density, if you will, so it needs less space. So the smallest heater is number one, uh, the next largest in front of it here is number two, and then number four, which is low pressure heater, is going to be the, the largest feed water heater. Now, having said that, um, when we talked about the turbine, we talked about extraction steam. Um, the extraction steam is going to come in from the turbine. You know, it's going to be drawn off at the appropriate pressures. And this would then be the extraction steam inlet to this particular feed water heater. Um, the extraction steam is going to move across this way. Um, and when it gets to the end, it's going to make a U-turn. And then it's going to move along the bottom half of the feed water heater as it moves back towards the entrance. Now. Another thing that we would note is that there's another line that comes into the steam space. Now, this is the drain that cascades backwards from the next highest pressure feed water heater, which is heater number one. So the high pressure drain from number one comes in, it mixes with the steam. Now keep in mind the steam is already beginning to condense. Um, the drain from number one is also going to be two phase. So we have this two phase mixture of steam, both at the same pressure, which have now mixed together. And now that steam as it condenses, is moving through the bottom of the feed water heater. At some point, it will be completely saturated. And then the last section is what we call the drain cooling zone. So we actually have three zones in this heater. The upper zone is going to be the desuperheating zone. The extraction steam is going to be superheated as it comes off the turbine. Then you're going to get to the condensing zone, which is where you're going to pick up the drain from number one. And then that two-phase mixture is going to turn into more and more and more water until finally it becomes a saturated liquid at about this point. And then the last several feet is going to be the condensing zone. That's where um, the condensed, uh, I'm sorry, compressed liquid is now, um, I'm sorry, where the saturated liquid is now going to become a compressed liquid. And that becomes the drain. So the drain is going to come out here. Um, that's going to then go to the next lowest pressure device, which is the open feed water heater, which is feed water heater number three. Okay. Now keep in mind that we have feed water, which is moving in the opposite direction. Um, in many ways, this is like a condenser, but not entirely. Um, the steam, which is condensing, is filling up the shell. The feed water is inside tubes. So what happens is that the feed water inlet is on this pipe on the other side. Um, that actually comes in to the bottom portion of the feed water heater, but inside tubes. And like the condenser, it's going to go through a tube sheet, which is going to restrict the flow to just the bottom half of tubes. Um, the feed water is going to go in the tubes all the way down to that end. It'll then move upwards. Um, typically, there's no separate tube sheet and water box on the side of the feed water heater. Um, what you're going to have is just tubes that are bent so the feed water is just going to go through the bent tubes. It's now going to come through the tubes in the top half, the whole time being heated by the steam that's condensing. And finally, we get to this point and the heated feed water, right? Feed water heater is going to now move to the top. And as this is heater number two, this is now going to go to the next higher pressure feed water heater, which is feed water heater number one. Okay, so we've looked at the closed feed water heaters, and now let's look at the open feed water heater. This is the open feed water heater, and clearly its design is quite a bit different. This is not a shell and tube device like the closed heaters. Um, this is an open device. There's actual physical mixing between the extraction steam and the feed water. So the extraction steam um, from the turbine actually comes in through this pipe and goes into the side of the upper portion of the open feed water heater. Um, the feed water uh, is actually coming in through this pipe over here. So this would be the feed water in from feed water heater number two. And the feed water comes in the top. Now, some of these devices have sprays, some of them have trays, and I don't know which one this has. Some of them have both. But in either case, um, you're actually mixing directly together the extraction steam and the feed water. That creates a lot of turbulence and actually drives the non-condensable gases, which we just call air, out of the solution. So the air is actually going to come out through the vent there up on top. Um, the 
extraction steam mixed with feed water is mixed in the right quantity so that you're going to get a compressed liquid, I'm sorry, a saturated liquid. And that saturated liquid is now going to be contained within this particular tank. Okay. Now you might wonder, well, why do we need a big tank like that? Um, let's keep in mind that directly below this feed water heater are the feed water pumps. Uh, the feed water pumps have to pressurize the feed water all the way up from whatever pressure they're coming in from the low pressure feed water heater, which is number four, all the way up to the pressure of the boiler. So that boiler pressure is going to be, you know, more than a thousand PSI. Um, you need to have a lot of net positive suction head on the pumps below um, so that you can pump against the one or 2,000 PSI discharge from the pump that ends up going into the furnace. So you need to have this tank. Um, I like to call it a head tank. Uh, technically, it's just part of the open feed water heater, but this provides us with a continuous amount of head so that the feed water pumps underneath work properly. And then one other thing to note about this particular device, um, not only are we going to have the feed water and the extraction steam coming in, but we're also going to have the drain that cascades back from the next highest pressure feed water heater, which is feed water heater number two that we just talked about. So here's the number two drain, and you can follow this up and around, and it actually then goes into the feed water heater uh, kind of above on the back side. Um, let's keep in mind that the feed water heaters are going to have extraction steam that's drawn off the turbine. So these extraction steam lines are directly below the turbine. So if you kind of look upwards, um, you'll see all these lines above me. And then you can see there's a big space up there. That's the turbine, the discharge from the turbine directly above us. So there's four extractions that come off the steam turbine, you know, one to each of the four uh, feed water heaters, right? Three closed, one open feed water heater. Um, the extraction steam lines are going to come down and, you know, you're going to have to have the ability to control the fraction of extraction steam. So we have this system here. Um, the extraction steam comes in. Um, here's a motor and manual operator, which is going to give you some ability to control, but usually that's just for stop purposes. This is a controller. Um, this is a, a big pneumatic controller. I'm sorry, hydraulic controller. Um, so this drum here is a hydraulic cylinder. Um, that's going to move up and down, and that's going to allow you to move a valve open and close to give you flow. Um, keep in mind that the extraction steam is coming in at a very high pressure. Um, so you have to have a pretty robust control system like this one in order to be able to open and close a valve against that high pressure. Now, all these extraction lines um, are kind of around me and they're all gonna collect together and then they're gonna go up above and into the feed water heaters. So the last thing we'd like to show you then are the feed water pumps. Um, let's keep in mind that um, we're gonna have condensate that comes out of the condenser, through the condensate pumps, through the low pressure closed feed water heater, and then the open feed water heater. And then the discharge from the open feed water heater um, is going to be directly above us. There's a big head tank on that feed water heater that's going to provide enough suction head to be able to operate these pumps. Um, so there's three pumps, um, like everything else in this plant, you know, each one's at 50% capacity. So you can always be running two, and then the third one will be, um, you know, as backup or undergoing maintenance as we're continuing to operate the plant. So what we have is the feed water that comes in. So this line directly above me here is the feed water inlet from the open feed water heater. Um, and as usual, it's going to go through a certain number of valves and um, some instrumentation. This is maybe the pressure on that line. Um, the feed water is going to go into this pump. Um, this is a multi-stage centrifugal pump. So it's going to, in stages, boost the pressure until we get all the way up to the boiler pressure. I mean, in all honesty, it's going to be a little bit higher than the boiler pressure, right? Because you're going to have line losses as we go through the pipes and then through the two higher pressure feed water heaters until we finally get into the boiler. Um, but nonetheless, the uh, feed water is going to come out here. Um, it's going to go over this way. Um, and then up and over and ultimately into the appropriate feed water heater directly above us.